Alright, now let's see Trip back again with Soul Blazer. And this time we're hitting the. Well, the underwater level. Most games seem to have one, and this is this one's game. This one's water level, I should say. As you can see, though, there's a bunch of smaller areas, little islands that are surrounding it. We'll see them all eventually, but for now, we're going to be heading to the main hub area. Which I believe is called St. L's? I never really mentioned a why. Well, anyway, just the one shortcut. Another open area. Oddly enough, this place is not completely underwater. Yeah, St. Ellis, right there. Oh, excuse me. And right off the bat, she mentions that we can't breathe underwater because we're human. Seems like something the master could have fixed, but uh, in the time we need to go get some bubble armor. Fortunately, talking to that statue opens up the shortcut. And then as you, the smarter of you, may have surmised, the bubble armor is here somewhere. With all the monkeys and fighting palm trees. Coconut trees, I should say. They, they fire coconuts in the cardinal directions. Again, nothing we haven't faced before. <sighs> oh, doing it again. Ah, oh, yawning. <sighs> okay. And our first saved is a dolphin. <sighs> Again, we're fall falling into that thing where just, there's not much to say. Uh, you go through the area, you fight the monsters. In this case, you got some monkeys who I think throw rocks at you every now and then. Oh, yeah, the fish jump up and down. You don't have to worry, really worry about them, though. Like the crabs from uh, Crusader of Cincy. Uh... I guess you could say that about any game, really. Just, just, just uh... I don't know. I'm finding it hard to find much to say about it. It's just you fight the monkeys, you fight the trees, you unlock all the bases. We'll be going to, um, I don't know what, oh, I actually have been considering uh, doing a playthrough of Skyrim's uh, Enderall mod. If you've ever heard of that, it was a full game conversion of uh, Skyrim. Completely different story. Hell, you only get like four race choices at the beginning and they're not even the, the typical choices. I really like it because even in the advent where they reuse old assets, they use them in different ways. So you see like a statue of, um, uh, who was the, Debella, like a statue of Debella. But in that universe, there is no Debella, so it, they've used it to represent something else. Every book is different. Though I confess, I've only read a handful of the books in the... Elder Scrolls series. I'm referring in, in particular to the in-game books. But I've played a bit of... Oh, excuse me. i played a bit of Enderal already. And, uh... It is really impressive. Yeah, I think I might do that next. I think we maybe try streaming. I can use some money to get myself a better computer. But, uh. I don't know, I'd like to do something a little more recent. It's a little more to talk about, I think. Look to the pairs of monkeys we just killed. And we got a mermaid. Who's guarding an entrance to something. Could be interesting. Oh, and a... another mermaid. Uh. Uh. Okay. Sorry. One thing I really liked about Enderall, about the Enderall mod, is that they've made magic a little bit more dangerous. 
it actually, uh, you have some, I can't remember what they called in the game, it's been so long since I played it, but, um, I never finished it, I should say. But when you use magic, you get, it, it acts like radiation. Like using uh, healing magic, uh, going into certain areas that are just rampant with magical energy. It cr creates its own little effort. I can't remember what they call it, but it's, uh... It is something you've got to keep an eye on, because it's like in a Fallout. If you get over, if you max out your radiation, you get killed. If you max this meter out, you die, supposedly because you go insane with magical power. But it does create this interesting situation, since your healing magic and a lot of your potions will do that. They'll, they'll ramp up, and the, uh, the Ambrosia potions, that sort of the... Radaway equivalent. They're really expensive. <laughs> Even where I was at the game, I didn't have a ton of money. Again, I like that too. They balanced that a lot better than the standard Skyrim. But, uh. Overall, it's just interesting. Because Skyrim was such a fantastic game. And to see them take that engine and make something completely new, an entire new world to play around in. Yeah, we're, we're gonna be doing that sooner or later. Maybe videos like this, maybe like, um, I might try to do Twitch. That be, could be interesting. Like I said, I could put up maybe, uh, stream some of it. And, uh, yeah, put up a donation thing. Use the one to buy myself a really nice computer so I can, um, play better games. We got a decent one now, but, uh, I don't know, it's kind of, it can play a lot of the port games from the Xbox 360, but it can't really do the Xbox One. I could, Fallout 4 is kind of where it stopped working. I can't complain, I didn't pay that much for it. I, I built it myself. And by built it, I mean I bought a bare bones kit and a few parts. Let's see, I almost finished with the dungeon here. Strange called an island a dungeon. But we'll make sure we get everything. I think there's like something we can't reach from here though. We will need to go in from another from the ocean floor to get everything here. The important thing though is that I found the bubble armor. Because that opens up the rest of the world. The rest of the uh, area I should say. I can think of a lot of things that I like to play. But it's, uh, I mentioned the Lundra before. The first the Lundra was a really good game. I always appreciate when the game takes like the Zelda formula and improves upon it. Okami, I felt, was a better Zelda game, which is ironic because I seem to recall it coming out around the same time as Twilight Princess, another game in which you control a wolf, at least some of the time. Illusion of Gaia, Secret of Mana, Secret of Evermore. A lot of adventure games, so I've got plenty to work with. At the same time, I'd like to choose ones that um, you don't see too often. And part of me kind of wants to go back and do the ones I had done the first time I was trying to do LPs. Uh, Gunman's Proof. Don't think I'll do Undying again. Uh... Okay, what we got unlocked? Uh, still the same. Uh, four memory statues. Yeah, that's kind of the key to this area. Uh, statues, the statues that look like the one in the main area, the one that's straight up from the shortcut. It's ironic seeing as that the, uh, if she didn't actually contain the doorway of the prison, Say like, bringing her back would actually have caused a problem. Like, you could have just went by it, but not really, because like I said, whenever you restore her, it restores that doorway too. Don't worry though, we got another doorway you can get later. See, we can see what's past her. Oh, that's right. We need this over here. This is uh, mermaid tears. We'll need those for the volcano, as the uh, if you put. 
they may, someone will mention it later when you put mermaids here in the volcano it'll make it stop and we'll need that because you can't it's an underwater volcano and it has it like the heat tiles the thing is you can't use the you know, your uh, mat your armor the ice armor because you need the bubble armor to breathe yeah great hands they go up and down <laughs> spoilers See, still thinking of adventure games. Actually, I'm thinking of Prey. I just picked up a copy and I, I really want to play it. But like I said, my computer's not so great, so I'm using a console for it. I'm sure I could find stuff to like do console rips, but it's so much easier to just use computer. Plus, I've got plenty to do on computer. But the only thing that's console exclusive I could imagine myself wanting to perhaps do a quick video on is Monsters Probably Stole My Princess, a indie game on the Xbox 360 I enjoyed. Let's see, I'm uh, getting pretty far in Andromeda. I just reached the Turian's goal in the world. Uh, spoiler notice, I suppose, but, well, not too big of a surprise. Or as a, if you played that game, you realize that the, the people who come to the uh, the arcs that came to the Andromeda region to start a new colony, none of the Golden Worlds panned out. And the Turians' Golden World not only did not pan out, but looks like someone Alderaan did. It's nothing but floating rocks, though you get to drive around on one of them. It's fun. The Nomad, the uh, the Mako for the Andromeda series. Uh, running around with low gravity is really fun. I will say for people who are curious about Andromeda, yes, the Nomad's a big part of it, but um, it's not as annoying as the Mako to drive. There are plenty of times when I enjoyed it. Like I said, the Asteroid, if you, for some reason, if you go full speed near any edge, it triggers like your team members just panicking. Cause it's like they know you're going to try to ramp off at some point. And it's just funny to hear characters who are completely cool throughout the game suddenly just screaming, Oh shit, 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 shit! <laughs> Ryder, no! I've heard some people compare it, the new one, Andromeda 2, uh, Mass Effect 1. And uh, I, I can see that. It, it does feel a lot like the first Mass Effect game. Though I'm glad to say that the, uh, they brought the, the loyalty kind of missions back. And the loyalty missions play really well. Very much like in the second game. New areas, interesting scenarios, I particularly like PBs. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even going to mention anything else but that. That was, that was too big of a surprise. But, um... I also like the fact that they haven't. It doesn't look like, look doesn't look like they're going to try to reuse the Reapers. Because uh, I was kind of worried that that might come back. I think the big question I've got right now are the. Uh, I hope that some of the other species come back. Right now it's been Solarians, Turians, Asari, Krogan, and humans for the most part. And the, the local species in the Angara. And the cat, who are the bad guy. And, uh... But I miss some of the classic, uh... Mass Effect characters, races. I really miss the Elcor. Elcor are awesome. I miss the Quarians. Mostly because I had my character romance tally in the first game, but also because they're just an interesting species. And with the... It seems like they would be a group who would be totally on board with the initiative because they've already lost their home. You could easily see a group of them saying, you know what, instead of trying to get our home back, why don't we go to another galaxy and find a home there? And I saw someone online mention that you could totally see them, instead of doing the cryogenic freeze for the trip, just straight up doing a, a generation uh, ship run. So it'd be interesting to see like a 600. It's like Quarians who had 600 years on the way to advance. 
interfacing with the uh, the uh, the, uh, the other arcs, who basically have been asleep for 600 years. Oh uh, well, I suppose we better talk about the uh, ocean a bit. We got some jellyfish here. Nothing too complicated. As you see, every time we go to uh, every time we unlock one of the uh, mermaid statues, she'll open up. One, she'll move on these little pillars that look like fish. That like uh, on top of the screen there. Oh, six more in this area. Okay. Uh, big sea urchins aren't too big of an issue. They're slow enough that you can avoid them and you don't really have to fight them most of the time anyway. On the other hand, I seem to recall they usually they do have higher right, chance of giving you better gems. So, okay. Well, we're moving on with this. Oh, there's this uh, second of the dancers. I guess I should, uh... I guess the only other thing I'm really playing at the moment is uh, Warframe. And I've just been playing Warframe for a while. I will say I've got over 800 hours on the uh, Steam. And I've been playing the PlayStation 4 one because it's a little more convenient for me. Which is a shame because I've got it's all the trouble to get all that stuff on the, uh, the PC version. And now I only play it every now and then. I got like an event going on. I'm not. I played a little bit yesterday. I wasn't a huge fan. Still, if you play uh, Warframe on the PlayStation 4 and you're looking for a, a guild that's hoping to stay small, I just set up the Elsewhere Corporate. I've got most of the labs built. Uh, research is kind of. Eh. But I do have a full-size uh, dojo set up, and most of the Tenno Lab unlocked, which uh, gives you like you can buy like the, the blueprints for uh, certain Warframes, Archwings, and a good host of weapons. I enjoy the game because it's basically space dungeons, and um, I don't know, I've played so many online RPGs that have just been cookie cutter, uh, I call them cookie cutter memorbikers. I take the term from uh, Yahtzee Croshaw, but uh, where literally it seems like the entire interface has just been cut out of some sort of template. They've just given you a character, your character can, uh, the usual basic quests, kill five muck rats, kill, uh, kill Five sand crabs, and you level up in a very, very straightforward like a skill tree. And I actually, it actually had a similar problem with Wildstar because even though it's a, it looks much better than the usual cookie cutters, it just felt like it played the same. I was really hoping for something more like Warframe, which honestly comes out like a third-person shooter. If you haven't, if you're not familiar with the series, it's basically a. Um, it's not massively multiplayer, but you do play. You can play in squads. But I will say, I did pretty good getting a, a playing through by myself. Uh, you have like a planetary progression, starting from uh, Mercury, going all the way to. Well, going through all the planets of the solar system. Uh, the moon at one point and a few other, like new places of like Phobos, Eris, uh, Sedna. In any case, I managed to get as far as about Neptune on my own. Just a lot of it's trial and error, finding the weapons that work for you. Got a whole slew of weapons, everything from grenades, like your standard grenade launchers and uh, rocket launchers crossbows, stuff like the phage which shoots out what I like to call noodle beams. Uh, but the, the real difference is the, if you haven't played it before is that you instead of having a class system you have a warframe. To start the game off it gives you a choice between three. The Excalibur, the Mag, and uh, the Volt. Each of their own stats, each of their own special abilities. 
thing is, when as you play through the game, you can get more Warframes, and you can switch them between missions, and it's all you want. And uh, I haven't found any Warframe I'd say is useless. Every everyone has its own special way of playing. Me, I'm kind of a support player, so I usually use the Nezha, whose abilities include being able to put shields up. Uh, there's actually an extra step around that. I had to get a special mod to use the spell, to use the uh, an ability on my friends, but it gives them like a, a shield that will basically last until it's knocked off. I have an ability that can create a shoot out a healing pulse that helps everybody nearby. And if pushed into a corner, I have an ability that will basically just impale anything that's standing nearby. But every Warframe is different. Every Warframe has its own kind of play style associated with it. I actually did remarkably well. Uh, kind of going berserker. Just finding a good melee weapon and beating the crap out of everything. Anyway, Warframe is a pretty fun game. I've always liked it anyway. I kind of wish there was like a fantasy equivalent. I've heard Vindictus might be like that. I don't know. I'm kind of reluctant to try our online games after stuff like... Uh, I played Maple Story for a while. It was kind of fun, but at the same time, it just... I think the art style is what got to me eventually in that game. Remember the fact that you buy cosmetics in that game and basically they will go away after so many days so you have to buy them again if you want. Now I'll admit to being kind of a vain player, I, I like to make my characters look pretty. I certainly spend enough time on friggin' Mass Effect Andromeda. on the character creation screen, or that in Fallout 4, which I still haven't finished playing. Oh. Power to stop Magma Rain. Okay, yeah, we need this guy. He's another one who joins your host of beings in the floating orb. Okay, I remember in this area it's really easy to miss some of these enemy uh, bases. Let me make sure we get them all. Now look at it though, we're basically taking all the lakes out of this. I'm sure the fish are enemies, but... Hey, hang on, they're just fish. Uh, unless we were to assume they're demon fish, why didn't Death Toll take them? It took the other fish. Do they like angelfish? Oh, oh, angelfish, I see. And two treasures. What we got? We got gems. And we got something. Medical herb. Okay. Can't complain. Always nice. Okay. Yeah, I think we're pretty much done. We're going to be heading back to the uh, Elves Palace right now. Let's go ahead and talk to everyone we got. You know, I'm going to put it up to you guys. Do y'all like it when I go weirdly off topic like that? Or would you prefer me to just stick with the game on what we're on right then. I don't know. I seem to kind of enjoy it more whenever I'm just I'm able to jump from topic to topic. Wouldn't mind actually doing some uh, some talking on the Elsewhere universe, the, the novels I've written, explaining some of the various things that setups I've had there. Yeah, this guy's not necessary. In fact, I think I've done this before while I, uh, I passed him. <laughs> Where I passed the area before I actually remembered he was here. Oh, uh, she just explains the uh, magma tears, the uh, mermaid tears. 
Yeah, she. Yeah, okay. So I'm pretty sure that's where we're heading next, actually. But, uh. You mind me rambling or you want me to stay on topic? Just. Leave a comment or. If you want me to. You do either. Whichever you prefer. Or hey. I, I wouldn't mind taking suggestions for adventure games. For now, though, I think we're getting. Close to, yeah, we're we're really good to halfway spot. Let's go ahead and stop it for now. Back to save. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and cut it for now. Well, uh, I'll see y'all next time. <laughs> Let me know if you want me to keep rambling or stay on topic. 